بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا In this chapter which is Babu Taghayyur in Nas The chapter where people change, times change Previously we mentioned it is called also a chapter of Al-Khawf That is a chapter which teaches men to always live in fear Because you can be so high today, tomorrow you can be so flat Taghayyur in Nas, people changing supposed to make man scared that if everyone around me are slipping so fast there's one place we went to we visited that you walk over the water so they got this like bricks or like a stone in the water so it's placed at a nice even spot that you just walk so that person who just walks normally Meaning you don't ever put two legs on the same stone. You just walk one step, one step, one step. That person crosses it. And that person who walks and he thinks like, I'll just get my balance. As soon as you try to get your balance, you fall. So there's all water around. All water. So we reached there and I had a bayan after that also. Now I'm looking at that thing. Now if I fall, one is the... I'll get wet. That's like a small thing. How I'll give the bayan after that? Everyone will know he fell. But when you're watching that thing, like some are going so nice through it. They're just walking. And that person who like just shows a little fear. Just a little fear and he tries to get his balance. Because that stone is slippery. There's all water around it. So it's definitely going to be slippery somewhere. So even if you see one person slip, even one, and you saw nine went across, even one slipping is supposed to make you scared. That I could be the next. When Umar radiallahu anh said, he said it like this, that on the day of Qiyamah, if an announcement is made, only one is going in the fire. He said, I will still have the fear, maybe it's me. Only one. So, taghayyur in nas means when people are slipping so fast, how can I be sure that I won't also slip? Taghayyur. So, there will always be fear. And together with that fear, there will be hope. That Allah, if you allow someone to stand, no one will be able to drop him. But always fear. When there's fear, there's no pride. Because pride comes about when a man says that, look at me. When there's fear, there's no look at me. Like In front of the court, in the past when you used to have these kings who could do as they wanted, so whenever something would go wrong, and things always go wrong, then that man who was like the closest of the king, closest, in front of everyone else, the king just like stabs him, or says cut his neck. And everybody else, when they see it, everyone just looks down like, doesn't know whether I'm next. That level of khawf, was supposed to have been in the people of Iman. Because that king also is not an independent king. But just because at the moment there's no one to tell him, tomorrow his own son will overthrow him. And then the man will say, now it's revenge time. But in Almighty Allah's court, there's no talk. Allah is Al-Ghani. He is independent of all. So if an indication is made that all go, all will go. So anyone who says, like, I'm the one, like, without me work won't get done, by Almighty Allah, it's just take command and there's no one left. Allah is Allah. So to live with this khawf. So two narrations we will mention. The first one that comes in this chapter is Allah's Nabi sallallahu said, Sayati ala nasi zaman. Such a time will definitely come upon people. الصَّابِرُ فِيهِ كَالْقَابِضْ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ A man who will be patient in that era, he will be similar to a man who is not just holding 
a piece of coal in his hand, but it is holding it tightly. This is called qabid. Firstly, what is coal? As long as there's no fire lit on that coal, you can carry that coal, it will only make your hand dirty. And it will make the mark, but you can hold it. But have a braai. Light that. After all the meat is finished, everyone ate. That thing will remain hot till the next day. Whole night in the coal it remained, but it never got cold. The next morning you want to go move it. As soon as you touch it, then you will understand heat. That that thing, even when all the heat is supposed to be gone, it's still burning. Imagine when it's hot. As soon as the person touches it, the splinter comes, boils, and he pulls his hand away. At that moment, you have to think about, will there ever be a man who is so strong, who can take that hot piece of coal in his hand, and he can hold on to it? This is called qabz. Qabz means, you say, make a fuss. Like a man who holds on to that piece of coal. He will be like the man who will be making sabr in an era. Now the question comes, why was this mentioned and for who was it mentioned? So one issue comes in these ahadiths which we will discuss now and further. When Nabi Sallallahu speaks a lot about what is called fitan. That how will things happen later on? Like sayati al nas a time will definitely come. So the first question is, when is that time? Meaning, is it still after 10 years? When am I seeing it? Or did it happen already? So it was a miracle that the words of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to a great extent resemble Quran. In the aspect that where Quran spoke to the whole world, and it spoke to every era as though it was revealed only for that era. So when a man found it, he said, no, no, this ayat, people of the past perhaps read it, but I understood it. And the man in a city would have said, where the village man would understand this ayat. The man who was moving on the waters, he says, the only man who can understand Quran. One time one person came here and he said, you have studied the stars. So in our madrasa, we don't ever study about stars. But in other madaris, the, the study of stars was like one part of the cause. So he said, then how you all understand Quran? Like that Without this one subject, there's no way you can understand Quran. Quran is such that the man who studied zero also will also understand it. And the man who studied high, he'll say, besides me, no one understands it. And the man of the earth first era and the man of the last era. Everyone can relate with Quran and he will think that this one was definitely revealed for this era. It just fits exact in place. This would happen, then this would happen, then this. The ahadith about issues of the end times, exactly the same you will find. When a person will read it, he will say that this narration, no, no, it's for my era. This one was mentioned. Look what happened before. It went in such a sequence. So think about this narration. A time will come upon man that a man who makes sabr at that time will be like the man holding on to that. Kalqabid al al-jamr. There was a great scholar of the past, Allama Shatbi. Many books he had written. In one of his books he wrote that I don't think anyone before this saw this error. He said, we found that error. That was like 100 years ago, perhaps. He said, we found the error. We could meet him and then come visit our error. Then you will understand what you were holding on was like a matchstick. We are holding on to that. But in every era, in every town, this deen was going to come with difficulties. Now what was the purpose of the narration? It was two. One is, no matter how hard you find the error, you yourself know it's not like holding on to burning coal. Because you know what is burning coal. To touch burning coal, you can't manage. To hold it for five minutes, you'll never manage. But if someone says, can you manage to practice on deen? The person says, it's very hard. I say, but is it harder than that? He says, no, not so hard. He says, remember a time will come to make sabr on deen is going to be so hard also. 
So you can't say eight times are very hard. Because you haven't found the hardest of times. You got an easy time. And the proof of it is the day man says it's easier for me to hold a thing. But I can't practice. Then you will tell him you found the time. But until then, no matter how hard the error is, the narration is saying, it was an error of difficulty in the Islamic world. So some people complained to Abdullah bin Umar regarding the governor. Abdullah bin Umar said, make sabr. Because Allah's Nabi said, everyone who will come after will be even worse. Meaning you haven't got the worst. You haven't got the worst. What you got, just be happy with it. A man comes and tells you, my wife is like this, my wife is like You can tell him the same thing. Make sabr because the one who comes next will be worse than this one. A lot of times a man says, I get rid of this one and he found it after that. There's no the best in this world. There's the rest. There's no the best. He can't be the best. She can't be the best. You take what you got and you make sabr because the next is even worse. That man who understood this, he'll always be happy. Like, I never found the hardest. Second thing that the hadith mentioned is even if that time will come, which is called the hardest and the most difficult, in the deen of Allah, there will be some people created who will have that ability to hold on to that burning coal. And they'll walk around with it miraculously. In the deen, no matter how hard the error will become. When the hadith said, As-sabiru fi, it means there will be some people who will be mountains in an era where the winds will just be blowing. But they won't be moving. So when you hear that, then it gives a person that, I can't be a coward. If this deen can create such people, then why can't I ask Allah to let me also be amongst us? So there's no cowardice in this claim that times are too difficult. Either it's not so bad, it's going to get worse. So don't ever say hey, times are too bad, I just gave up. Whatever the desire is, whatever the haram is in front, you must ask yourself, is it so hard like holding on to the coal? Then you will say, not so hard, I'm burning little only. I can manage. It's going to get even worse. And if you ever find that time where it's the worst of worst, then the answer is same. That even in that time there will be people who will hold on to it. Why can't I hold on to it? Al-Jamr. The next narration that comes, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Yushiku. That it is very soon, very possible. An tada'a alaykum al-umam. Umam means ummatun's plural. Different groups who got nothing to do with the other. They got their own fights carrying on. But they will all unite against you. Tada'a alaykumul umam. All of them will unite against you. Years ago when this thing happened of 911, and then it was called the coalition, and everyone said, this is the narration, like we found it. 50 years before that when the world war took place, that's why it was called world war, it was called the allied forces. And the whole Muslim world was taken to the ground. That time said, this is the narration. Next few years again you will say, this is the narration. Amazing the narrations are. It's as though Nabi Sallallahu saw the errors and all of those errors were put in front. This happening and that happening and that happening. And he could choose one sentence that would work for every error. It was miraculous, those words. As you will speak of the narrations of Fitan, what was the purpose is whoever finds himself in a spot, he will say, as though my Nabi is with me in my spot. The letter was written for me. And a man 100 years later will say, no, no, the letter was for me actually. Exact the advice that was going to be given was going to work for you for 100 years before, 100 years before, 100 years before. Tada'a alaykum al-umam kama tada'a al-akalatu ila qas'atiha. He says like how sometimes you have that big plate and each person who's eating is looking for somebody else, come join me. Normally when people eat, you are greedy. You eat and you go in front of the, the, the plate so that your body covers it. So that someone from far can't really see how much meat there is. 
But sometimes when there's a lot of food, then the person eating, he is more worried of calling somebody else, you also come and eat. So the time will come in the world that the enemy will find so easy the Muslim world that they won't be like gripped with greed that only I want to take over. They'll be telling that other one, you also take over. When the world war took place, that's what happened. They said, let's divide the Muslim states. So Italy was still, you want this one, we'll give you this one. So This country would go to that one. This country would go to that one. France says, I'll take this one. America said, I'll take that one. Everyone was just like, yeah, you can take this share. You can take this share. This part, let's share it half half. Everyone was like, invite more people can come in. Come in more. But it never ended. It will carry on like this. It happened before. It will happen after. The main part was the narration showed Allah's Nabi Sallallahu was with the Ummah in that condition also. He said, you will find that time. So the Sahabi radiallahu anh asked, Amin qillatin nahnu yawma idhin ya Rasulallah Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That why will that ever happen? Like? Where so easy it will be just to finish us. Will it be like we will be small groups everywhere? Because when you are a small group, then one just jumps and finishes you. And he says, the other one, take that one, take that one. So Nabi Sallallahu said, no, because he spoke about a big piala, a big plate, enough food. So he said, Bal antum kathir, you will be lot. Because the food will be lot. The Muslim ummah will be so many. And so many never only meant in number, but it meant in everything. Kathir. In number, in wealth, in weapons, in intelligence because if you ask the Muslim ummah like don't you all have anything the answer will be they got everything their wealth is actually used by the non-Muslim to get their work done Allah put it in the world of Islam everything but amazing when it came out everything collapsed when it came out everything collapsed there's no shortage of wealth in the Muslim world and with wealth, you can put up universities, you can put up schools, you can put up departments, you can do what you want. Kathir. The narration showed Kathir in every aspect you will be. You will be in abundance. He says, but everything that is lot doesn't always mean beneficial. He says, you will be like the foam of the flood. Ghutha unka ghutha is sail. Like the foam of the flood, what happens when the flood comes, that water doesn't go on its normal path. It goes off its path. Because it goes off its path, that water loses its color. Because it's moving now through sand. So the water becomes brown, ugly, dirty. And then that froth gathers on the top. That froth is like all the dirt, because after a while water starts pushing the dirt to the top. Because water again wants to become clean. Amazing that example, but amazing that when the Ummah will lose their direction and they will go off their cause, it's like called flood waters. Such a huge number, but they went off where they could have benefited everyone because they were like waters. But because they went off, they became floods. They harmed everyone. Because a time came in the Muslim Ummah that it was the Muslims killing the Muslims. More than the non-Muslims killing. It was the Muslims paying the non-Muslims to kill the Muslims. Each one was desirous, I must be the boss. Where today in our small circles we learn, this one made jadu on that one. And this one hates that one so much. And this one, he's making dua, Allah, kill that one, kill that one. You see, that one is supposed to be your aid, the enemy is somebody else. That always was in the ummah. So Lord... So much of benefit for the world, but they went off course. When they went off course, their water became flood. When it became flood, it went on to the wrong things. It went on to hasad, on to jealousy, on to gathering of wealth. It forgot its purpose in life, you all going towards death and to meet Allah. So it became a flood. When it became a flood, what happened? The color of the water changed. Suddenly a beautiful ummah became ugly. Now others would look at it and say, you all got no akhlaq. You are like animals. But that wasn't the ummah. That was the flood. It was going to be ugly because it moved off its course. Now when people saw it, they were not going to accept Islam. 
Now many of them will say, I want to pull out of Islam. They say, others are much better because it was a flood. But after a while, what happens? That water itself wants to start cleaning itself. The water itself wants to start cleaning itself. So it pushes the froth, the dirt to the top. The hadith said, you will be like the dirt on the top. That the water itself will want to get rid of you. Meaning Islam will want to get rid of you. That if you can come out, again the world will see a true Islam. He said, you will be that froth. So when the world is invited, they are invited actually, the people are calling, but actually Islam is also begging, take them off. Because this is not Islam. Islam is supposed to be clean stuff. Once that froth, however, goes, the water again becomes clean. In every era, when Quran spoke about Bani Israel when they left Fir'aun, it spoke about that first group who were told the land is promised for you. But because they were the dirt, the deen wasn't going to take them to the land of Sham. They were going to be deprived for 40 years, go nowhere. The law was when this entire generation will die, another generation will get it. So in every era there would always be times when Islam, the people of Islam with huge numbers would just go off. When they would go off they would become filthy, dirty, they would become flood, they would spoil everything. And a time would come where the water itself would push them to the top. When they would be pushed to the top, Allah Tabarukullah would send upon one zalim over another. And the world would see like open massacre taking place. But that open massacre was of who also? It was of dirt. Problem is now who is that dirt? That dirt could also be me and you. Because in every era man doesn't know in the court of Allah what's called dirt. So always when we hear about the enemy attacked and how they went through, how many madaris closed, how many scholars were martyred, butchered, how their families were taken and disgraced. But that was some fraud that also came to the top. And when the fraud is being removed, then a lot of times what happens is when someone is taking away dirt, in that dirt, little bit clean water also goes away. Because have you ever seen when something is in the pot and the dirt comes onto the top and you need to clean, that when you scoop like the seer, little bit of the clean has to also go because it's linked. The hadith made it very clear. Nabi Islam said, when dirt becomes lot, then even the good go. Even the good go. This is the chapter of the Ghayyur Nas. When people change in a bad manner, Everyone must have fear that if the time comes where the water wants to cleanse itself again and perhaps we are in an era where Islam wants to come back onto course. A revolution is taking place which makes us all thrilled that I'm waiting for the revolution. But the revolution takes place with the froth first getting wiped out. And as it goes, a lot of good also goes with it. Babu taghayyur in nas. And things just change. And a man says, I never knew like it was going to happen so fast. Anyone who follows things happening in the world, one small thing just triggers and the whole thing changes. Everyone was living so comfortably and a new law passes. Whether it was Kashmir and just one law, everything changed. Now in France, one thing happened and everyone is in panic. And it's like this match that the light hit on here and that fire is spreading, another country catches, another country catches, everyone. The ghayyur in nas. When a revolution is going to take place, make a lot of dua. That, oh Allah, it mustn't be me and my family are also on the top. That we were also amongst those who were not supposed to be part of the revolution. So when the Sahabi said, then how? What do you mean froth? Like, what is froth? What's dirt? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah will remove from the hearts of your enemies al-mahabbata minkum that fear that they once had for you that awe 
And he will place in your hearts wahan. So whoever got wahan now is that fraud. So the sahabi immediately wanted to know what's this wahan. Because this wahan means that you are the fraud. And a time must come where you must get knocked out. You don't deserve to be on this water. Actually you're spoiling the water. As long as you're on it, the water won't be clean. The world will never see clean water. So not only are you dirty, you're spoiling the whole picture. You need to be moved. This is the ghayyur in nas. The question is, do I have this wahan? So he asked, what is this wahan? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyyatul mawt. The love of the world and that hatred of death. Hatred or just I don't like it. The love of this world wa karahiyyatul mawt. And this can have lot stages. Lot of stages. The more it is, the more we are fraught. The more brown and dirty. The less it is, the further we are away from the fraught. But we could still be near the fraught. Imagine after narrating this Mullah Ali Qari Rahimullah wrote this Ibarat. وَقَدْ أُبْتُلِينَا بِهَذَا He wrote in his era. He said, indeed we have all been made mubtala in the sickness. He says, so actually we are like dead people already in the guise of the living. Meaning we're just waiting for the enemy to just knock us off. Every man must look. How much do I love dunya? That is my aspiration in life. That I must drive a Merc and a BM. One is it's comfortable so I drive it if it's there. And if it doesn't, it's not there, it makes no difference. One is that's my shock, hubbu dunya. If it is hubbu dunya, no one's going to come and tell you you got the love of the world. Every man must see, am I the fraud? That have I spoiled the picture of Islam, and a time is coming that Islam is pushing me up, that you also get wiped out. I need to go clean for the world again. Because when the revolution comes, the ones who had the love of the world, wa karahiyatul maut. And who had that aversion to die. They're not going to be in the deep waters for the revolution. They're going to be that first thing that's scooped out. And then the world says, this is Islam. We never knew Islam is so beautiful. So from now what we can do, however, is you've always heard about those duas of Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. I ask you shahadatan fi sabilik wa fi baladi rasulik. So we all like that second part of the narration. Wafi baladi rasuli. That shahadatan fi sabilik. I want to die in your path. You all all heard the narration. You all did it in Ula and you will carry on doing it. Man mata wa lam yaghzu wa lam yuhaddith bihi nafsa. He never fought but he never thought about it also. And he dies on the branch of hypocrisy. The sfrat. If there's aversion for death. To get away that aversion for death, start making this dua. How you make many other duas. One dua every day make, Oh Allah, I ask you for shahada fi sabirik. I ask you for shahada fi sabirik. It's when you start asking, because if you tell someone ask to die, you say, no, no, masala wise you can't ask. But you don't want to ask. Because you don't want to die. The Quran made it very clear that see the Jew, they make a lot of stories. I am the beloved of Allah. But if you just tell them how you want to die, Allah said, even that sentence they won't even say. Amazing is that man who lifts up his hands and he says, Oh Allah, I ask you for shahada fi sabil. Death will not come faster if you make dua for it will never come. See the world when you're making dua at tarawih time. People got a shock for dunya. If the imam makes Rabbana, Atina, fi dunya, everyone says Amen. <laughs> Certain duas come then you just see everyone like quiet thinking, myself, what am I saying? Say an Amen. <laughs> There's so much of that grip of dunya, hubbu dunya. The world is going to come to all. It will come in the shoe of a person also. What's written for us is going to come. Luxury will come and even luxury is not paradise. And death is going to come. 
Shahadat is not a gift that everyone gets. Start making dua for the shahadat. It might save us from being the froth. And it might just push us a little deeper. So when that scoop is made, we might just miss. Allah will save us. Like, because no one wants to be like in that group, which becomes a fitna for another group. Like This was the group that was punished and was just wiped out. And then the next group came to save Islam. We want to be in the next group. We don't want to be like that group. that just got wiped out one day. Allah Tawarukullah bless us all. The love of the world, Allah Tawarukullah purify us from it. Karahiyatul Maut, Allah Tawarukullah change it to Hubbul Maut. I love to die. A desire to die. When will the time come for me to go? It's not easy. Why it's not easy? Because we never grow up with it. There's no like battle in our life. Like So when you don't grow up with something, it's not natural. Salt wasn't added in our food. A person whose salt is added, one person visited that time when the Muslim world was at war for years. Like It was in their nature. No? This is like, they're so used to like death. One person, he told me, I was sitting with them in the cave and then I heard that bomb. Like Everything started shaking. Every, like, rocks are falling. And they're still eating the sandwich. And they're looking out and see they're, they're, they're one guy laughing. But that person, the like, whole face changed. They're, like, eating sandwich. Because they grew up in it. But I went to one country, I asked, like, he said, no, I came back recently. That time it was Afghanistan. So this person was an Afghani. I asked him, you go Afghanistan? So he said, yeah, I go. He said, which place is Tora Bora? So at that time, Tora Bora, every day they were throwing a bomb on Tora Bora. So I was amazed, like, like what's in Tora Bora? whole day they're bombing, there's nothing there. He said, no, my family is there. My family. I said, one day, like, how are they surviving there? So he says, no, it's like, we're so used to it. He said, when I was there, like, the, the fighting started right there. He says, like, if you go out, you'll see the aunties who are doing their washing. So when it starts now, this group shooting, that group, that group shooting, as it start, starts, the aunties, they like, they're looking. <laughs> and as soon as it stops, he says they carry on washing them. Okay, and he wasn't lying. Like He said, it became like nature for them. It's like in their blood. Now, me and you will never get it. Why? Salt was never added. But dua can do a lot. Just to push us a little deeper. But oh Allah, the love to die for your deen. Shahadatan fi sabilik. Allah tabarak ta'ala bless us all inshallah with shahada in his part. Allah tabarak ta'ala let none of us ever be the front of this flood. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.